the next thing that I want to talk about is something that's very toxic, and it's not because I'm a great person. It just happens to not be one of my struggles, so it's hard for me to understand why it's okay for somebody when they do it. But it's when they go into your little bag of secrets and decide they're going to dig one up and toss it at you when you're in an argument. I think that is, that might be one of the most to toxic. That might be the highest on the list of what to do. So you in confidence told me about your broken relationship with your sister and how it affected women. I'm making this up, guys. It affected your relationship with women, yada, yada, yada. And then I wait till an argument to go, this is why your sister doesn't mess with you anymore. Yeah. Where does that come from? Is it like, is it how they, do you think it's how they really feel and they're just not holding back in that moment? Or do you feel like they're just so ill-equipped to handle their frustration that they want to make the other person feel just as hurt and frustrated? I think it's a little bit of both. You know, I, I always say you got to fight fair, right? Mm -hmm. And fair fighting means that you don't, you stay on topic. So if we're arguing about, you know, I don't, uh, you, you know, you, you never call uh, before you come home and, um, or you're, you're coming home late consistently, right? Then that's what the argument is about. But it can be very easy to start jumping topics because what ends up happening when an argument starts, it's almost like all of the irritations decide, hey, it's time. let's go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> got to fight fair. Anyway, so why would I come home on time? <laughs> exactly, right? And so you got to fight fair because, you know, once you start weaponizing vulnerability, then a smart person will stop being vulnerable in front of you. They'll stop telling you their secrets. They'll stop telling you those things. And, and once that starts the relationship is naturally going to break down because you don't have that flow of intimate communication. And that's one of the ways that we build intimacy. Yes. I think is we get into an argument. I'm losing the argument. And I know I am because maybe I was wrong, but I'm not ready to admit that I'm wrong yet because we're still in the argument. And so I pull, you know, I, I pull out this bomb that I have and I, and I throw it just so I can, you know, get the... the ground. The, yeah, <laughs> right. The, the problem is, is that, you know, and, I, and I, I tell men this all the time, once you start saying things that you cannot apologize for, making up, it, 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 it changes, you mm -hmm. know. You should be able to say, you know what, babe, I'm sorry. You're, you were right. I was wrong. I'm very sorry. But if you have to apologize or attempt to apologize for malicious, hurtful, yeah. you know, just that type of language, I don't care what she says. I don't care if she says it's okay, no problem. That does not go away. Because that wasn't you, you know, stating your case. That yeah. was you deliberately trying to hurt me. That was you kicking me while I was down. That was you trying to disarm me emotionally because you're mad you're yeah. angry yeah right and so i'm not going to arm you with that you know that type of weaponry anymore right and i'll stop talking to you and god forbid i find someone who is a little easier to talk to <laughs> like Kristen, who i'm not afraid of anymore and and create that bond so yeah and i want to get into you know, in the second half of this conversation, we're talking about what to look for and what to avoid. I also want to leave people with tools on what what you can do proactively. Because what I found for me is that when certain things, when certain boundaries are crossed, I go into a word that rhymes with itch. Like, I will enter that territory, my heart spinning, my eyes turn red, and I am a psychopath. Right if I'm at that place. I want to get to a place in life where I, I don't even have a level like that where I can even reach it. But for now, she's there. But there's steps one, two, three, and four that have to be passed by for me to even get to her neighborhood. So I want to give people those steps so that they can find out the things that trigger them because, like I said, it's not because I'm better than anyone else, but that's never been my heart. I've never in an argument thought, hmm, what could I say that's going to destroy this person and right. make them stop? It's usually more of this gesture, like, stop, stop hurting me. It's never, like, with a weapon. It's more defending myself as opposed to attacking my opponent, which sure. shouldn't even be an opponent. Um, 
But I love what you said about weaponizing vulnerability. And here's the thing. So many people want their partner to be vulnerable. And like you said, that brings the intimacy. And so if they're doing these things that are non-verbally telling you the partner, don't be vulnerable with me, don't feel safe, then they're going to turn around and be mad that you're not being vulnerable. How come you tell your best friend everything? Or how come you can always confide in your brother, but you can't confide in me? Well, that's why, buddy. Why? <laughs> I want to... Uh, I want to get into this. Okay, there are two types of people. Um, there's the person who, when something is a problem, they speak to it immediately, and it's like, ah, oh, gets it off their chest. And then mm -hmm. the other side is that somebody could say, my God, you're always nagging. Then you have the other person who's like, okay, take one to the chin. All right, take another one to the chin. Okay, I got shoved. I got stepped on. Okay, now I'm at the point I need to say something. Yeah. But that person, the downside of that is that something that looked like a tiny little tap, it comes across as this because it was the straw that broke the camel's back right one way or the other is better or do you feel like a hybrid is necessary no I, I think that the key is to to learn what type of person your partner is you know and, and, and i think that one of the biggest things we have to get away from is this idea of right and wrong uh better or worse mm -hmm. uh you know correct or incorrect because essentially how we do things is a, um, a an amalgamation of our experiences, our uh, our upbringing. Like you know, that. it's all very personal, right? It's what works for us. It's not right. It's what works for us, right. Okay. And so, when you get into a situation where you're like, I deal with things the right way, mm. you do things the wrong way, and you need to do what I do so that we both can be right. Well, that's only going to help force me to to clench on yes. to a way of doing things now the irony is if i see that you know what you're not burdened by little things along the way mm -hmm. teach me how to deal with things along the way so that you know you clinking your teeth against the fork doesn't cause me to go I hate you and your mother. And, yep. <laughs> and this is why your sister don't mess with you. Exactly. Why you're at a take off that blue shirt. Exactly. You take that damn shirt off. You know I hate that shirt. You know. You know it on purpose. <laughs> no sex for a week. <laughs> so, you know, I, I think that once we can get away from that, that whole right wrong uh, concept, That's then we start going. to pick up little nuances that our partner has that we may favor. Because um, you're going in almost like, sorry to jump in, but it's like you're going in with a blank slate as opposed to you're coming in with your manual. Right. I come with my manual like, this is what works, and let's get with the program. But right. a new blank journal saying, okay, let's find out what works for us. For us, right. And, and I've had to, you know, in relationships, I've had to modify. Cause I'm, the, I'm the go into my dark space, let me figure this out. I don't want to talk to you. Don't talk to me person. And it's not, I don't like being that, that person. Because hey, it, takes I would never get that. it takes a lot of energy to ignore someone that you really care about, that you love, and that you live with. You know what I mean? It's, it takes a lot of energy to walk around a house and pretend like that person is not there, right? <laughs> and to hold that face, it takes a lot of muscles. Yeah, it does. And invariably, there's going to come a point where you're going to need to engage. <laughs> It because you've been ignoring this person for three days and you're like, hey, uh, you see my socks. <laughs> and that's so short. <laughs> Sorry. Right. And so I, I, I had to adopt this, I, this concept where, you know, give me a moment to sulk and then I'll come back, engage and say, here's how I feel. And I try my best to not, and I'm not, I'm not great at this. But I try my best to not make it personal because mm -hmm. conflict is good. You know what yeah. I mean? Conflict means that every, I always say conflict means that everyone is being honest mm -hmm. because if you never have conflict, then someone is lying. And what they're lying yeah. about is their true feelings because I don't care if you're twin, if, if twins fight, that it makes sense that two people who are raised in two different houses uh, in two different states, in two different conditions, are going to have disagreements. Good. But if you're in the situation where you have a, you know, whatever you like type person, 
it may seem great at first, <laughs> but at some point, <laughs> but at some point you want an alternative view. You want yeah. the whole a relationship is to broaden your perspective. And that friction of the two. Yeah. yeah. Friction, again, I've, I've always said diamonds does not, do not become diamonds with just love and hope. Yes. It takes pressure and time. Yeah. Right. And if you don't have that pressure, then all you have after time is cold. Yeah. That's it. No, that's so. good. I really like that. I like that a lot. I like coming in with the empty slate and working together. I had a story where so someone that I dated had such a strong opinion about nails, mm. women nails. And the thing that irked me so much and I tried to express to him was that he kept describing the situation in terms of good or bad, which you and I just got into. And instead of saying, Yancey, I really like painted nails and I really like X, Y, Z, it was a whole presentation, so to speak, about how I was not the norm because there were occasions where I would go without my nails painted and it wasn't the end of the world to me. I did not feel less feminine. I did not feel, you know, like I was lazy. I just didn't have nail polish. And it wasn't enough for him to just say, I prefer my woman to have nail polish. And then it would go on and on to where we went out in public pointing out, now do you see how many, it was an attempt to show you're not the norm. And my thing is, this gets into the next point, I think it's very toxic when somebody tries to compare your partner, their partner to anyone else. Because even if there was proof that I was the only female, the only woman in the entire world who didn't always have nails painted, it doesn't matter. Because right. I'm dating or in a relationship with everyone else in the world. He's dating me. And so I think preferences should always be stated as such. And you and I know in a lot of conversations with the mutual you know, platforms that we're on, there's a term thrown out there, what a real man does. Yeah. Objective, right? And that's what's so offensive is that what you consider as a real man is not what he might consider a real man or even another woman thinks is a real man. So I that is a huge issue when people try to say you're an outlier. You're not, uh, you're not normal. I, I think it's a huge red flag for both men and women to get involved with someone who is overly opinionated about your, your style of dress, your, your a way of speaking, your, your personality, your, your, your being. Right. You know, to get into a relationship, so why are you with me? With, right? Well, to get into a relationship with someone who is constantly criticizing and critiquing things that are personal about you, yes, it's a huge red flag. Because here's the thing: what you're essentially saying, in my opinion, is you're not desirable for me. I don't like your presentation yes. or who I perceive you to be. So my thought process is don't date me. Right. You know I mean? Don't, don't date me. Right. You have, this is not a prison. You, you haven't been sentenced to go to dinner with me three nights a week. You know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> you have no choice. Yes. And the fact that I wear a beard or the fact that, you know, uh, whatever it is that I do, irks you to the point where you feel a need to verbalize it leave yes. leave because one i'm not going to change who i am mm -hmm. because if i do change who i am then all i've done is open the door for you to turn me into your own little personal project yes. now i'm doing everything i am fundamentally changing who i am to be better suited for who you who you think you want and when I make all of these changes, I start doing all of these things to accommodate you. I've also put you in a position where you can one day say, I don't want to be with you anymore, which, okay, whatever. But now I have to remember who was I before I met you. Uh, now, right. sitting in front of a plate of scrambled eggs, knowing I love my eggs over easy. Yes. My nails are painted. I don't want to paint it. I shaved off my damn beard. 
I loved my beard. Yeah. <laughs> about finding Yancey or finding yourself, the easiest way to lose yourself is to get involved with someone who out the gate starts yes. pointing out, you know, you shouldn't do that or you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't do that. And 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 just to to go here, if you tell me that a real man would fill in the blank, I'm out. Right. Because essentially right. what you're saying to me is um, I don't meet your definition of a real man. Yes. Again, I, I don't I'm not gonna sit here and transform myself into the version of me. I think what you should do instead of sitting across the table from me is use this time to go find a real man or, or a real one. All of us out. Yeah. Yeah. But we, think. we get into these relationships and we start to become malleable and, yes. and we start to change and we start to, you know, transform ourselves. And we're allowing ourselves to be manipulated into believing that everybody does it this way right you know this is the right way to do it you know every every woman in my family wears skirts yes. they date family <laughs> no it's so true and i was guilty of that like when we have certain reference points for me i'll give an example i'm not attracted to men with long hair you know braids or twists none of that but the reason i know is because nobody in my family is like that all the men in my family have having haircuts like yours or close shape, you know, close shaven. Um, and so I, I don't, I don't enjoy, I don't see that and go, Ooh, <laughs> I just don't like it. I'm not attracted to it, but I, I know there's nothing wrong with braids. There's nothing right. wrong with dreads. There's nothing wrong with twists. There's nothing wrong with, you know, longer curls. <laughs> it's just what I'm drawn to. And so I think it's just key to see how that person speaks. And also it's okay if they just, make a suggestion or a compliment. I feel like you can do a lot with a compliment. Oh, I love it when you wear black. You look so good in black. Or I love it when your nails are done. That, that is sexy. That's different than, oh God, your nails aren't paint. You know, it's just, the thing is you with your partner, it shouldn't be a gassing situation where they're being fraudulent and overly, you know, blowing up your head. But you should feel good about yourself with your person. Yeah. I think that's a big walk away people can take is, if you are constantly feeling down because of your partner, right? You're down them, your soul is heavy. You feel like you have low self-esteem. That's a huge issue. 